Hi everyone, so today we're going to be talking about link performance tips. This is video 4 out of who knows how many. And we have a single point on our agenda for this video, so we're going to be talking about branch prediction and branch elimination. And link in reality is just a vehicle to be able to show you these mechanisms and apply them in link. All right, let's move on. Let's see some code. So uh, what we're going to be looking at today is a very simple uh, function, at least for now, uh, that's called, called count odd. And as you can see, it's not linked yet. So um, maybe let's explain a couple of things. So while it is branch prediction, branch prediction uh, or much other branch predictor is a component in um, the CPU that has the responsibility to predict branches. So what's a branch? If statement is a branch. And why this is needed in a CPU. So as it turns out, uh, when we're executing code, we're actually executing instructions in the pipeline. And these things, uh, waiting on like evaluation of a branch, is expensive and we have to stall the entire pipeline. So CPUs have built branch predictors in order to be able to pick a branch ahead of time. Uh, based on some like data that we have from the past and that would allow us to not wait and you know schedule these instructions immediately. The problem becomes when we miss that branch, so we have a branch miss prediction, we pick the, the incorrect uh, branch, so we have to then throw the whole pipeline away and load up a new one and that of course is expensive because pipelines are pretty big right now in modern CPUs and uh, it's a performance cost. So it would be good to not uh, even, you know, to do it uh, correctly, to pick the correct branches or even to force the CPU to be able to do that. And second of all, um, there's a technique called branch elimination where we could not have any if statements in this, for example, code here. Of course, uh, this makes sense if that branch elimination is, a, not, is cheap because sometimes eliminating all of the branches can be expensive and that's gonna eat away at our like gains uh, from branch prediction. So that's that. All right, so let's test some things. So let's test this function. What we're gonna have is we're gonna have a sequence uh, that, uh, you know, um, will go from zero to 20 and then it will roll back. So it's a simple, you know, increasing sequence and then it's restarting. And let's see how that performs. So it took 17-ish milliseconds. Let's just run it again, 16, around 17 milliseconds. All right, so um, that's, I think, pretty good. But now let's test the same function but let's take that sequence and let's randomize it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch uh, the indexes of the values. So it's a, it's a random sequence now, so it doesn't have a clear pattern or easy, like, to be easy detectable pattern. So let's run it again and let's measure performance. So as you can probably tell, performance got, uh, you know, a bit, it's not what it used to be and it's not great. So it's like what, four times, three times slower, something like that. So um, as you can hopefully see with this simple example, um, branch prediction is important for performance, first of all, and second of all, branch prediction, if you have a branch in your code, uh, it's going to be the performance of the, your function is going to be determined by your data if you don't do anything with the branch. Okay. But let's now try and eliminate the branch from this function. So uh, we have another function uh, with no branching in it and how it's built. So each time uh, you have an odd number in, in like bit terms, if you, if you, you know, take the number and convert it into a bit code, then what you're gonna see is um, the first significant bit of any number, if it's odd, it's going to have a one. If it's even, that's going to be zero. So we can use that and do an end operation with the item. And if the significant bit is one, then this is going to evaluate to one. If it's zero, it's going to evaluate to zero. So we know how to count 
odd numbers without any branches. So we can use this function here and let's test now if you know, random or sequential data is going to have any effect on, on the performance. So let's start with the increasing and receding sequence. And it takes roughly 10 milliseconds, nine to 10. And now let's do a random sequence again. And let's see if it got worse. No, it didn't. So it's actually what we expect. So there's no performance differences uh, between these uh, two, you know, uh, data sets now. So that function is consistent. It's not, uh, you know, data does not affect its performance. So that's good because it's going to be very stable in time. Uh, and sometimes you want that characteristic in, uh, in your code. And yeah, it's overall good. But <clears throat> how does this uh, have to, what this has to do any in any way with link? Well, let's see uh, a function where we could, for example, apply, um, you know, branch elimination and see, let's see if it's going to be, you know, working for us. So we have a function called count and we have a list and we're going to count items that are greater than some number and that some number I just picked at random, it's nine. So this function will, will do a count. And let's quickly see how it's implemented, just to be sure. So count, um, you know, takes an i enumerable, and we're not going to touch any interfaces because uh, we already discussed, you know, the cost of virtualization of these if statement null checks uh, in previous videos. So now we're going to just touch um, upon this this here code. So it's going to do a bunch of null checks and it's going to just get a for each loop and it's going to, you know, evaluate the predicate and if the predicate is true, then it's going to count. Pretty simple, pretty simple function. Okay, so uh, let's, let's run it and let's see how it performs. So it takes 134 milliseconds roughly. Yeah give or take. And uh, let's now see how random, completely random sequence, uh, is it have any like effect on this function? <clears throat> so it has indeed uh, an effect. It's a bit slower. It's not, you know, terribly slower, but it is slower. You can, you can tell. So uh, what's the, you know, what's the solution? Can we have something that uh, will eliminate this branch here? Can we do something about this? Well, let's see. So um, I have a custom count link version here where, um, you know, it does all of the same things, uh, but the implementation is a bit different. I do these null checks as well. And what I do here that, you know, it's not being done in that function is that I take the predicate and I do a little trick in .NET um, because there's no other way to do it in .NET at least, not for now, uh, where I'm going to take the Boolean and I'm going to convert it into an int and now I'm going to get the value. So um, there's no easy way of converting a Boolean to end in .NET, but if you can take the pointer to it, then you can convert uh, that Boolean to an end pointer and you can get the value and you're gonna get one or zero if it's true or false. So um, we can use that and eliminate the branch. This of course is expensive. It's not a cheap operation to do. So this, uh, this is something that we have to keep in mind. But uh, at least, you know, we have, we've eliminated the branch. That would mean that our function should be stable and with, with performance. Okay, so let's uh, test this version. So um, let's run this version on, uh, you know, increasing sequence, 117 milliseconds. I believe it's a, just a tiny bit faster than link, who cares? And now let's test it on a random data set. So the random data set is pretty consistent. Let's run it again. 
yeah, 129 ish milliseconds. So let's compare that to link. Yeah, so as you can see, it's faster. It is noticeably faster. Okay, so um, I hope that you see the benefit of like branch prediction and branch elimination. This was like a obviously very simple and small example. Um, the last thing that we can do is we can, you know, come use something more robust than this measure function here and we can do benchmark.net where benchmark.net has the added benefit of having a, uh, you know, a, a bunch of configuration flags where you can do hardware counters. So we can measure branch mispredictions and branch instructions in general. So um, the test is pretty much the same thing. We have two sequences, random and increasing and uh, they're global so they're gonna be set once so that's kind of not what we wanted but we can run with it for now and we just have two categories so sequential and random and we're gonna be counting uh, the link version and our custom link version so um, let's run the test and let's see uh, what our results gonna be Okay, so here are the results and, you know, they got a bit mangled, so um, let's like do this, do this. Okay, so here are the results. So um, the mean for the sequential versions in like custom link and, you know, just link is pretty much the same. So uh, the interesting bit to look at is branch instructions per operation and branch mispredictions per, per operation. So there is a difference here, but um, it's probably because, you know, count makes um, like an if statement somewhere, like a null check that I might miss or something like that. And, uh, you know, still it's not much of a difference. So that doesn't make a lot of difference, but here, uh, if we have the random sequence, then this whole thing is like tells another different story, right? So the difference is noticeable here. It's around, you know, 30% and uh, branch mispredictions, as you can see, it's like 150 to almost 2000. So the performance between the sequential version and the random version for our custom link is consistent because it's like 120 to 115 while the random version here is 127 165 so let me show you this maybe on this slide because i did did have a run again of this function so um as you can probably tell um there is a difference there is an like a measurable difference and it's um, the bigger the difference, the more the branches you can optimize like that, or you can um, arrange them in such a way that the branch prediction will guess correctly. So you have to work with the branch predictor. So in fact, even if we knocked down like, uh, you know, uh, virtualization of interfaces, uh, structs not being on the heap, uh, we've optimized all of these things. There's still things to, that we can do with link to make it even faster. Those are extreme, but like I said, the link in this video at least is a vehicle to tell you about these mechanisms and how you can apply them. So um, we started with just odd numbers and we successfully applied that to link as well. So um, yeah, I hope that uh, you have now a, just a tiny bit better understanding of what it is. Uh, I mean branch prediction and branch elimination. Um, that's all for this video. I plan to do more videos about Link and uh, there's going to be a, probably a whole separate video about branch prediction and branch elimination and how it works and you know what not, right? Um, leave a, if I made a mistake, leave a comment. Uh, if you liked the video, you know, leave a thumbs up. Um, subscribe if you think that this material is, you know, worth your time and that's all for this video so have a nice day and thank you bye